What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. On my last video, I got two comments that fit quite nicely together with regards to technique, and I'm gonna use this video to discuss them. The first question came from Max Lindquist. He's a great diver, a real natural, um, a smart guy, and somebody that I really respect. He went deeper as a teenager than most of us will ever go in our whole lives. He mentions that although my technique isn't perfect, it's better than his, and why not just use the technique that I have and start to go deeper and wait and see if a problem arises. This is a fair point. All you have to do is watch the dive eye footage from one of the world championships and you'll see there's plenty of really deep divers with less than perfect technique. Even in the clip that I used of Alexei Molchanov to kind of help me decide on how my technique is, on other parts of the dive, there were, there were moments where he wasn't using perfect technique. My reasoning is proper technique has been developed because it's the most efficient way to do a given activity. And efficiency is the key. Like if you think about free diving or at least free diving to depth, like a really good way to describe it would be from going from the surface to the depth and back in the most efficient manner possible. If a certain technique is the most efficient way to do that, then I think it's important to learn that technique. By default, improving my technique makes me more efficient, it makes me a better freediver, it gives me more potential for success in the future. A second reason is one of the major motivations for me to train to go deeper is to gain more knowledge and experience that I can then pass on to my athletes as a coach. So going through this period of experimentation gives me a greater resource of knowledge that I can fall back on as a coach. And the third reason is that I just enjoy the process. Learning, adapting, experimentation. These are some of the things that I enjoy the most about freediving. A great thing about diving for me is there's no cut cookie cutter, um, one size fits all program for people to get better. Um, freediving's not been around long enough. There's nothing set in stone when it comes to training. So for me, it suits me perfectly because I'm kind of a rebel, I don't like to follow the beaten path, and in this sport there basically is no beaten path, so I can go my own way, experiment, and find the route that I like the most. The reason I chose to increase my depth and free immersion while I'm simultaneously building up my constant weight technique is I can't build my depth in constant weight and simultaneously build up my technique in constant weight. If you're trying to add something new to your diving, if you're trying to work on technique, the dive has to be within your comfort zone. If I'm distracted, if I'm not thinking about technique, while I'm trying to build technique, my deep dive is going to be using bad technique, my shallower dives will be good technique. So I'm not getting the same reinforcements as if 100% of my diving with a fin is using proper technique. Another great reason for me increasing my depth and free immersion is that I can get start to get more comfortable with deep diving without the added distraction of actually having to fin down and fin up. Plus, free immersion dives take longer than constant weight dives, therefore I'm getting used to longer dive times, which for me, in all honesty, is a weakness. This brings us on to the second comment. Bjorn Fu mentions that at the start of my free immersion dive, I'm pulling up slack on the rope and that his coach has told him that this is a waste of energy. So after talking so much about technique, am I using bad technique? Before I start to talk about this, I want to tell you guys a story. So there was a, a jazz musician, one of the best jazz musicians of all time, called Charlie Parker. And he was asked, what does it take to become an expert jazz musician? His reply was quite great. He said, first, you need to master your instrument. Then, you need to master the music. Then, you gotta forget all that shit and just play. What I get from that quote is that first you need to learn proper technique. Then, after you've learned that technique, if you feel the, the need to adapt and use less than perfect technique, then you can do it. But first you should already have mastered that technique. Using less than perfect technique should be a choice. It shouldn't be a result of just bad habits or not spending the time to actually learn the technique in the first place. Even for me, when my finning is how I want it to be, I'm not going to be using exactly perfect te technique on each part of my dive because according to the depth 
and your buoyancy, you're gonna have to adapt. So to specifically address me pulling up slack at the start of my dive, I'm lightly weighted, I only have one kilo with a three millimeter wetsuit, and my bottom weight is not so heavy, it's only 12 kilos. If it was a competition setup with a platform and 15 kilos on the bottom weight, I could pull with proper technique and not pull up any slack. But since my setup is the way it is, I need to forget all that shit and just play. I have to adapt the way I pull. So I do shorter pulls, hand over hand, never letting go of the rope. At first, while I'm buoyant, some slack does get pulled up behind me. But because I'm never letting go of the rope, I'm never losing that slack. And once I start to become more negatively buoyant, the weight will then pull me back down. Once I get past my neutral buoyancy, I can then switch to a more classical free immersion technique. Cool, so now we spoke about that, I can update you guys on how my training's going. I have footage here from my third day of diving. Um, my third day I did an increase of 3 meters in my free immersion. Free immersion still feeling great, there's no signs of any problems coming on anytime soon. Um, I made a little bit of a change to my equalization. I started to top up my mouth fill much sooner, so it was really easy to get a full full fill. And then I just kept topping it up as I was pulling deeper and just maintaining a really full mouth fill from a shallower depth. Um, this worked out really well for me and, and I'm gonna start to incorporate that into my diving from now on. My technique work for constant weight is also coming along nicely. I've started moving my hips a little bit further back. As I expected, this is bringing my fin further forward and the movement in my hips, it's more balanced. As a nice consequence that I didn't expect, this also means that I'm bending at the knee a little bit less. Um, I feel like the bend at my knee was kind of to help bring my hips further forward, which I now no longer need to do because I'm bringing them further back so I can get the same range of movement from the fin without bringing the hips as far forward. So yeah, my training's going fantastic. I couldn't be happier with how everything's progressing. I wanna say thank you to Kat and Yana for the safety and the videography. If you guys have any questions about my methods or my thought process, then leave a comment in the comment section and I'll talk about it in the next video. Until next time guys, take it easy and dive safe.